This story starts with a girl named Sessa, just 20 years old, lost on a driving trip through Mexico. She'd been driving for miles, realizing she no longer recognized anything. And what had once been semi-populated turned into cosmic darkness, illuminated only by the piercing eyes in the sky. She pulled over to the side of the road that was vacant and flat, ahead and behind, as far as she could see. She felt lonely, scared even. A burst of green light in the sky caused her to look left. She couldn't control herself. She stepped off the road and onto the terrain. The moment her first foot touched the dirt, her phone lost all connection and then power. She found herself walking toward the nearest mountain with the stars illuminating her along the way. She didn't know how long she had been walking, but eventually she reached the mountainous cave. But something told her not to go in. She went to the side and began walking around and behind it. She passed fauna of the desert, taking a moment to appreciate it. She looked out and saw a decaying rocket leaning on its side. It seemed as long as a five-story building. She felt the sadness of destruction. The eyes in the sky showed her more. She walked on and saw a crater so large she felt the loneliness of the void, a familiar feeling of nothingness. She saw a rail that ran across the expanse of the meteor. It looked so far to the other side. She was afraid of the journey, but her foot entered the rail and she was pulled to walk it. Miles below, only darkness. Timeless, calm, free of constant thought, she walked. Up ahead, she saw buildings. She saw decrepit dormitories, labs, kitchens, medical facilities, set in a desert terrain that had killed any dream they once possessed. They didn't belong there. She silently mourned their loss and acknowledged their stupidity for thinking they were invited. Behind them was another mountain, another cave opening. It was illuminated with the green beam that pulled the rhythm of her body in. She was not afraid. She was not anything. She was only in motion. She entered the cave. A light exploded in her eyes and inside her head. No sound, no pain, simply a flash. She was at her car, leaning on her hood, holding her phone, 8.30 p.m., the same time last she looked at her phone. A sound behind her caused her to turn around. It was a young man in a Jeep hopping out with a concerned face. He approached. I'm Benjamin, he said. He was all of 21. Are you okay? She nodded. What were you doing out here? He asked. Dazed, she said. I got lost, but I took a walk. She paused. Out there. And she pointed to the vast desert. Benjamin's eyes bulged. You walked out there alone? She proceeded to tell him about the night eyes, decaying rocket, the meteor she crossed, the dead buildings, and the cave that somehow transported her right back to the beginning. Benjamin was silenced for a moment. Then he held her hand, seeing she had had a strange experience that had left her concerned scared even. What's your name? He asked. Sessa, she explained. Sessa, the rail across the meteor is nine miles long. 
not including the distance you walked to get to it. She didn't know what to say. She just looked out at the terrain. Benjamin joined her leaning on the hood and looking. They both understood something beyond human, beyond something was out there. Benjamin explained the history of the place to Sessa. Three meteor crashes, a rocket crash aimed to land elsewhere was sucked into its vortex. A lab created to study it. One by one, the people there died by suffocation or some heinous accident until finally none would work there. The folklore is that only those with pure intent will survive the journey, he said. His eyes filled with joy. They both smiled. I have been there too, he said. Two young humans with pure hearts. Where were you headed? he asked. Um, just to see Area 51, but I got lost. I'll say, Benjamin added. Want to get something to eat together? It's up ahead. You can follow me in your car to civilization. Sure, she said. The diner was alien themed. They unpacked each other's stories. They finished their meals choosing to not separate and continue talking about a possible idea of making an alien themed fun park on his own family property, honoring the experience they both had. Somehow it felt like something other had brought them together. And who knows, maybe, just maybe, it was the aliens. Don't forget to subscribe, ring that bell, like and comment down below. And until we talk again, stay spooky.